Hi, I'm Mike. Welcome to my Waffle Square, where I obsess about things and you get to benefit from it. So as you pan across this beautiful engine with all of its covers, does this ever catch your eye in a bad way? Yeah, it's like a standout eyesore. So this is the bracket for the brake booster vacuum motor. And when I look at it, it's so out of character. I used to think, well, maybe it's acting as a ground and they couldn't paint it. But I watched a video and if you look at these two wires right here heading into the pump, they are just one positive and one negative that turns it on and off. So it does not need the, the bracket for a ground. And then I just thought, well, maybe in everybody else's car, it looks okay, but ours just for some reason got rusty. Well, no, because if you look them up on eBay like I did, the used ones are all rusted like this too. Well, this channel's all about me obsessing over things until they're just right. Uh, I can't live with this, so what do you say we remove it, sand it up, get it prepped, and paint it and put it back and let it be the glorious bracket it was once meant to be. Come with me. Now this shouldn't be too bad. There are two 10 millimeter nuts right here. There are three eight millimeter bolts down there because why not have them different? Then you've got this wiring harness right here that is held on by, if you see in this picture, like a Christmas tree style um, plastic fitting. And then this wiring harness right here that actually goes to our pump is a different one. If you look here, it looks like you gotta squeeze it uh, with some pliers. So everything's different, but it still shouldn't be so bad. Now I'm gonna try getting in here first with this little door panel removal tool to pop this guy out. There we go. Got my little grip mat here. I love that. That was a Father's Day gift. This guy, I'm going to try to get in here and squeeze. There we go. Oh, I think I broke that one. Nope. We'll have to see if we can replace that. Okay. Then let's loosen these so we can just go to the three on the pedestal itself. Now, depending on your type of socket, it might not be uh, long enough. So I'm using a, a deep socket. That was on there pretty good. All right, it feels like this washer you see is integral to the rubber grommet, or at least stuck on there, so we shouldn't have to worry about anything else. Now let's get in here at the bottom of each of the three legs of the bracket is an eight millimeter bolt. Oh, that came off real easy. And then this last one here is actually holding on to the water bottle too. So I'm gonna make a note not to put him on there too tight and break that plastic water bottle base when we reverse the order here. Okay. And there we go. Just gonna set this other grip mat right here so we don't scratch the paint of our wheel well. All right, let's take a look at that bracket. Well, this guy looking pretty rough. So I think we're gonna go to work on the homes here. Go to work on the homes here with a pair of pliers and a blowtorch. Or in our case, a wire wheel attachment. Those 
too cold outside to spray paint, but I've got a couple ladders and a paint pole set up here with a wire hanger, and this is going to do nice in the garage. This is a clean metal primer, and it's good for lightly rusted metal. So before we get the nice black color I've got planned for it, let's get a coat of primer on there. So I'm going to be using this Krylon high heat, not because I think the bracket is going to get so hot over in the corner of the engine, but I already had this on hand and it works great for our fire pit, so why not? Now, once you try the mix quick for your reciprocating saw, you'll never go back to mixing these cans of paint by hand. Greatest thing ever. All right, since we're inside the garage in kind of a tight space, I am going to use a particulate mask. I'm going to do light coats. Well, I think that turned out really, really good. It's not super shiny, but neither is the wheel well, so I think it's gonna be perfect. Let's go ahead and put it in. All right. I took the time to uh, vacuum out any of the debris, wipe down with a wet cloth to get any of the old rust off of the areas where the bracket was touching our uh, wheel well. So that's all nice and clean. Now let's get our bracket in here. There we go. Isn't that gonna look great? The three bolts at the bottom of each leg were held in there pretty good. So I'm just gonna put a dab of blue Loctite on there so they don't come loose with the natural vibration of the vehicle. Remember, we don't want to put this one on very tight at all because the plastic bottle is underneath it. Be tough to get it started in there with just my fingers, so it's fallen out of my socket. Therefore, I put a piece of painter's tape on there just to help me get it started and then I'll peel that off. There we go. Let's get our little tree back in there. Boom. So I've got this container full of wire harness routing clips. This is pretty great. I got this off of Amazon. So we can go around the wiring and clip it in like this and then clip it over. But I don't want the wiring to get close to uh, any of these cables, over, these hoses over here. So instead, I think we'll go as original as we can. I couldn't find anything to slide into this piece, but I have this one and watch this. So it's like a zip tie. We're gonna put it right here. Clip off the excess and pop this guy into place. There. So if you found this video helpful or it inspired you to work on your LR3, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms to start suggesting it to more people. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content and there's a lot more videos on this car to come.
Now, I'm gonna leave links to everything I talked about, including these wiring harness attachments in case you break one like I did. Full disclosure, those will be Amazon affiliate links. So if you click on them and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing, but I do get a small reward at the end of the month that helps to justify all the time it takes to set up and edit these videos. Now, how about some comments from our last episode where we flush the heater core? Nicholas writes, now I feel like doing that as well on my LR4, but since it ain't broken, by the way, you sound amazing on the bucket mic. And you got my like right at the Bullet Boys reference. Cheers. Nicholas, I really hope I inspire you and others to work on their cars as well. Craig D writes, I've learned more from your videos than I have from all other LR YouTubers combined. I have owned and currently own an LR3, two LR4s, and a Range Rover supercharged. With the cost of a good LR technician approaching $150 an hour, your channel has been a godsend to me. Thank you so much and keep up your excellent and dare I say, inspiring work. Craig, as I say in every video, I'm not a mechanic. I just dress like one on YouTube. So if I can inspire you and others to get out here and work on their vehicles saying, well, if he can do it, I can do it, then I have done my job. Finally, Jerry Green writes, whoa, that's like a colonic for your car. Sorry for that mental image. You're doing great work. Thanks so much for the video. Jerry, thank you for the kind words and thank you to everybody who's liked, subscribed, and commented on these videos. It's really helpful. Now in our next video, we should have the hoses in that go from the heater core up to the front of the vehicle. And uh, we're gonna be replacing those also there's two drop-down hoses that those attach to that go to the rear uh, climate control. So while we're at it, let's flush those as well and see if we get any debris out of that rear one. Once we get all that done and buttoned up, we'll take it for another drive and see if we fix the problem. Until then, thank you for watching.